This is Nick with Logos by Nick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this abstract logo design using Inkscape. So I'll go ahead and open up Inkscape here. The first thing we want to do is just set up our documents that we're all working with similar properties and a similar view. So I'll go to File, Document Properties, and I want to set the display units to pixels, and I want to turn off the visibility of the page border. And we'll go to View. We're going to want Custom Selected. I'll zoom in at one-to-one. -one. And then uh, up here, uh, where, it, where we have the snapping, the snapping menu, I want to have this selected right here. This says Snap Cusp Nodes. And then this one as well, Snap Smooth Nodes. We want those both selected. And then up here, where it says When Scaling Objects Scale the Stroke Width by the Same Proportions, we want that turned off. And then I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to open up the align and distribute menu with this button here. We're going to want last selected chosen from that drop down. And then we'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that button there. So the first thing we're going to do is create a rectangle. So I'm going to grab the squares and rectangles tool and I'm going to click and drag on the canvas to create a, a nice long rectangle like that where it's about, I'd say, one to three aspect ratio when it comes to width and height. It doesn't have to be exactly that, just as long as it's longer than it is wide. Uh, that's pretty good. Once we've done that, I'm going to take this node here in the top right corner and just click and drag that all the way down so that we ended up with we end up with these rounded edges, almost like it's a circle at the top here. And we'll go to path, object to path to convert that to uh, just to, to finalize the rounded edges. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of the fill color by clicking this X down here. And then I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard and click on the color red to give it a red outline. And I'm going to change the thickness of this red outline by coming to the Stroke Style panel over here. Uh, let me just make sure we have that set to pixels. Uh, I'm going to change the width of this to something like uh, 50. See how that looks. 50 may look different for you depending on the uh, resolution of your screen and how big you made, how big or small you made this rectangle. So I would just eyeball it. We want to get something a little thicker than this. I'm going to try 75, maybe a little smaller. 65. That right there is what we're looking for, about that thickness, roughly. It doesn't have to be exactly, it doesn't even have to be that close. Just as long as it's somewhere in that range, it's pretty good. If you want, let me go to the select tool. The exact size I'm working with here is 259 by 480 pixels. If you want to use this exact size and a 65 point stroke. So once we've done that, I'm just going to finalize this by going to path, stroke to path, and I'm going to bring the opacity of this down in half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the Select tool. I'm going to right-click that and go to Duplicate, and I'm going to make that green. And if you go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, you'll see there's key nodes. There's this, uh, I guess you can call them anchor points. They're called nodes in Inkscape at where the, uh, the, the object starts to bend on its path. And what I want to do is I want to take, I want to grab the object where this node is right here and snap it over to this node of the red object. So let me show you so that makes a little more sense. I'm going to grab this select tool. I'm going to grab the object right over here and just snap it right alongside it like that. And you should end up with it snapping right there, just like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in over this top portion. I'm going to hold control and roll up the mouse wheel a few times. And I'm just going to move the page by pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. And I'm going to grab the Bezier pen over here. I'm going to snap to the very top node of this object and click and bring the line across and snap to the top the top node of this object right there and click and then just finish the shape going inside of the objects like that and then back to the starting point and we'll go to select hold shift click on the green object and go to path union now let me zoom back out by again holding control and rolling down the mouse wheel what i want to do now is i want to click on this red object right click it go to duplicate hold shift click on the green object and go to path difference. And we're going to end up with something like that. It kind of looks like a 3D zero or it has a some kind of extruding number. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab the uh, rectangle tool. I want to clip off the bottom portion of this graphic. So I'm just going to click and drag to create a great big rectangle going over the bottom portion there. Uh, this button up here, make corners sharp. I want to click that just to get back to having sharp corners on the rectangles. And I want to get rid of that outline, so I'm going to hold shift and click on the X down here in the bottom left-hand corner. Let me go back to the select tool, move this down a little bit. I want to right-click this and go to duplicate, then hold shift and click on the red object and go to path, difference. 
and then grab the other, this green, the original green rectangle, hold shift, click on the green objects over here, and go to path difference. And now what I'll do is I'll go to path break apart. And it's going to break that apart into two separate objects. And I'll click off of that to deselect everything. So what I'm going to do next is, let me zoom in a little bit. I'm going to grab the Bezier pen over here. And I'm going to snap to this corner. And I'm going to hold control to bring the line straight across uh, horizontally. And then I'm, while still holding control, I'm going to bring it up one step like that so that it's going at 15 degrees. And you'll notice it says down here in this bottom of the, of the screen, this portion of the screen, what angle it's at. And here we're going at 15 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and click there to create an anchor point. Let go of control and finish the object back at the starting point like that. Grab this select tool, hold shift, click on the red object and go to path difference. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side, but going the opposite way. So I'm going to grab the Bezier pen again. I'm going to snap to this corner, this red corner over here, and then just snap to this green corner over here like that. And then finish it up going around the outside. Grab the select tool, hold shift, click on the green object over here, and go to path difference so that we end up with this indented shape right here. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go back to the Bezier pen, and I'm going to draw another shape. So I'm going to snap to this corner again. And I'm going to hold control and bring it straight across, but then again, go down one step while holding control. So it locks it onto, this time it's a negative 15 degree angle like that. And click, let go of control, snap it to this corner, to this corner, and then back to the starting point. And now I'm going to snap to this corner over here. And again, I'm going to hold control and I'm going to bring this straight across horizontally and then just down one step like that. Go ahead and click. And then finish this shape up going around the outside of the original shape that we just drew. Go to the select tool, hold shift, click on this object over here, and go to path, difference. And I'll turn that blue. I'll get rid of the outline by holding shift and clicking on the X, and then bringing the opacity of that down about to a, about 50% like that. So what I'm going to do now is I want this arm of the design, or this leg of the design, to be longer than this leg of the design. So I'm going to click and drag over everything. Oops. Click and drag over everything so we have it all selected. And I'll go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And I'm going to click and drag over these nodes right here so I have them selected. And then I'm going to hold Control and just click and drag them up like that. Then I'll click and drag over these nodes down here. Hold Control and just click and drag them down. So we end up with like this, uh, this almost upside down and backwards J shape. Or I guess you can like maybe a lowercase r sort of shape. And once we've done that, I'll go to the select tool. Let me zoom out a little bit. I'm going to duplicate all of this by right clicking it and going to duplicate. And then I'm going to group it together with this button up here that says group selected objects. And then I'm going to flip that over here. We have our flipping buttons, flip it vertically and then horizontally. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. And now we'll just take the object and we'll snap it to this side right there like that. Then I'll hold shift, click on this blue shape, and click the button that says uh, align bottom edges. So we end up with something like that. So they're nice and aligned nicely, just like that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click and drag over everything and just hit the ungroup button to uh, ungroup everything. Click off of it to deselect. I'm going to click this red shape right here. I'm going to hold shift, click this green shape down here. Then while still holding shift, I'm going to grab this green shape over here, and I'm going to unify them all together by going to path union and I'll make them black like that. Now again I'm going to take this green shape, hold shift, click this green shape and then the red shape and go to path union. And then we end up with that right there. So there is the basis of our design. So let me click and drag over everything. Let me bring the opacity up. If you like the design as it is, you can just use it as it is and you can color it in accordingly. If you want to make it like how I had it in the thumbnail where it's an outline, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hold control and shift and scale this down. Uh, I'm going to go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. You don't have to necessarily do this. I just, personal preference. I'm going to take these nodes and hold Control and just click and drag them down like that to make this a little longer. I liked, I like the uh, elongated sort of style of the design there. Go back to the Select tool. What I'm going to do now is, with everything selected, I'm going to click on the X over here to get rid of the fill color. And then I'll hold Shift and click on the color black to give it an outline. And if your setup is anything like mine, you're going to get this big, ugly mess that we are going to fix now. Uh, in the Stroke Style panel, 
Uh, for whatever reason, my installation of Inkscape, yours might not do this, but mine does. It defaults to percentages. I don't know why. Uh, I'm going to switch that back to pixels. And I'm going to set that to maybe 10, see how that looks. That's a little too big. I'm going to go to 5, see how that looks. And if you notice, these little corners are sticking out of the sides there. Let me zoom in to show you. See these little corners right there? You can get rid of that by clicking this uh, over here where it says Join. We make that rounded. And then the cap, make that rounded as well, just for good measure. And then we end up with this right here. And if you want, you could uh, take this design. I would recommend duplicating it first. I'm going to right click, right click and go to duplicate. Take the duplicated copy and then go to path, stroke to path, and then path union. And you now have that design that you can color in and use however you'd like. And you also, why I recommended creating a duplicate is that you have this original over here as well in case you still want to work with this. If you want to color this in like that and take this one and make that colored in like that uh, and so on. So that's how you can go about creating that sort of design using Inkscape. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.